In 1944, along the muddy back roads of occupied France, German supply convoys were suddenly stalling. Not from grenades or artillery, but from a weapon so simple it could fit in a soldier's pocket. The culprits weren't elite commandos or tanks, but local resistance fighters armed with hammers, scrap wood and a handful of nails. Within hours, they could turn a dirt road into a vehicle graveyard. This was the nail trap, a crude, clever and devastatingly effective device that stopped enemy trucks cold. Today, we're diving into how it worked, how it shaped guerrilla warfare, and what practical lessons it offers even now for security, engineering and survival-minded folks. When the war pushed deep into Europe, traditional weapons were scarce among local resistance groups. Ammunition was precious, guns were limited, and explosives risked exposure. So these fighters turned to ingenuity. They began using whatever they could find, and one of their simplest but most effective inventions was the nail trap, or tire crippler, as Allied field manuals later called it. The concept was brutally straightforward. Resistance members would take a small wooden board, often a piece of crate or fence post, and hammer nails through it at a specific angle so their sharp ends faced upward. The nails were often bent slightly backward, creating barbs that ensured they didn't just puncture tires, but lodge deep inside the rubber. These boards were then camouflaged with a light dusting of soil or straw and laid across supply routes at night. When enemy trucks, motorcycles or supply wagons rolled over them, their tyres would burst instantly. For heavy vehicles, even one disabled tyre meant stopping the entire convoy. Easy targets for ambush or delay. Resistance groups didn't need bombs. They needed physics, patience, and a few spare nails. What made this trap so devastating wasn't just the nails themselves, but, you know, the design's understanding of pressure and force. A loaded truck could weigh several tons, and when all that weight concentrated on a small steel point, the result was just catastrophic for early military tyres. During the Second World War, most vehicles used bias ply tyres reinforced with layers of fabric, not the steel belts you'd find in modern ones. Once pierced, they couldn't self-seal or maintain their structure. They'd deflate rapidly and honestly shred within seconds of rolling. The angled nails added another layer of damage. Straight nails might just puncture a tyre, but angled ones acted like hooks, tearing the rubber as the wheel rotated. Even attempts to reverse the vehicle often made things worse, as the nails ripped deeper. Saboteurs quickly learned to space several boards across a narrow bridge or a bend in the road, making sure, you know, every axle hit at least one. In modern engineering terms, they'd created a primitive yet effective anti-mobility device, one that worked just as reliably on cobblestones as it did on gravel. For something made from junkyard materials, it was, well, astonishingly efficient. Allied intelligence reports from occupied France and Yugoslavia documented dozens of cases where convoys were delayed or immobilized for hours by these nail traps. One United States OSS, that's the Office of Strategic Services, document described a mission in 1944 where just a handful of saboteurs stopped an entire German fuel convoy outside Lyon by laying 20 boards studded with hand-forged nails along a single curve in the road. The result, four disabled trucks, several captured soldiers, and, remarkably, 
No gunfire exchanged. The beauty of the trap lay in its deniability. Once the vehicles hit the boards, the saboteurs could disappear into the night. No muzzle flashes, no noise, no traces beyond a few planks scattered in the dirt. For locals, it was an act of resistance. For occupying forces, it was a nightmare that forced them to waste manpower inspecting every suspicious stretch of road. By 1945, similar devices appeared in the Pacific and North African theatres where guerrilla fighters used bamboo spikes and welded scrap instead of nails. It was the same principle, adapted to local materials and terrain, a perfect example of how simplicity often outperforms sophistication in wartime. While nail traps are illegal to deploy on public or private roads today for obvious reasons, the principles behind them are worth studying. Understanding how pressure, traction and puncture resistance interact is invaluable for survivalists and off-grid builders. Knowing what can damage tyres and how to prevent it can be the difference between getting stranded and staying mobile. For example, when building a perimeter around an off-grid homestead or storage site, the concept of controlled mobility still applies. Rather than laying traps, one can design choke points using gravel beds, tyre spikes designed for security gates, or removable barriers that control vehicle movement safely. On the defensive side, you can learn from the same principle to avoid tyre damage. When off-roading or traversing rugged terrain, clearing debris and creating pathways free of sharp edges is critical. The W2 nail trap reminds us how fragile mobility can be and why preparedness should always include tyre repair kits, spare tubes and tools for field patching. If you want to experiment safely, you can build a small-scale demonstration to understand the mechanics. Take a wooden board, insert nails at different angles, and test it using an old discarded tyre, not in public areas. You'll see how the puncture angles affect how the tyre deflates. A practical, hands-on way to appreciate how something so crude could halt an army's advance. Beyond its tactical use, the nail trap represents a philosophy that resonates with every backyard tinkerer, historian or survivalist. The idea that effectiveness doesn't require complexity. During WF, it wasn't high-tech gadgets or expensive weapons that defined resistance. It was resourcefulness, craftsmanship and a deep understanding of how the physical world works. This little invention proved that you could fight an industrial war with agricultural tools. It was quiet warfare at its finest, low risk, high impact and born from necessity. In many ways, it captures the spirit of ingenuity that backyard experimenters and history enthusiasts still celebrate today. The simple nail trap was never glamorous but it was pure brilliance forged in hardship. It taught generations that survival and strategy often come down to practical thinking, not firepower. The men and women who built these traps weren't engineers. They were farmers, carpenters and mechanics using what they had to defend their land. If you found this story as fascinating as I did, make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, and share this video with others who appreciate forgotten wartime ingenuity. There's a lot more to uncover from history's toolboxes, and each one holds lessons that still matter today, right in your own backyard.